now with the launch of the new conservative government, we need to assess our past policies and uh, amend any policies that have room for improvement. I would like to make a few points about the regional security. First, it's the US ROK ex military exercises. Most of the Korean people are concerned, uh, are interested in the uh, suspension of the US ROK military exercises. However, what's Im more important is, as you can see from the Russia's invasion of Ukraine, the fact that only one a weapon can destruct uh, tens of other weapons. Actually, uh, making so much investment into a privately led weapon is North Korea. Sting uh, like uh, weapons. Uh, actually, North Korea has a wide range of weapons that it's akin to the weapons from the US. And to build such a weapon, it needs to have an advanced capability. And at the center of such capability, the uh, nighttime flight is a very important capability. There are some other tanks that are possessed by the US and South Korea. However, because of the complaints from the residents living nearby, many Korean forces had to give up on their nighttime, nighttime shooting. Actually, there are some forces in South Korea that stopped the nighttime shooting for over 10 years and the US forces had to move abroad to do such exercises. I think this issue shouldn't, I cannot be emphasized enough. Actually, the General Brooks and other generals have emphasized this issue several times. If you are interested in the US ROK alliance and a stronger alliance, please share this fact with other people. The residents living near the shooting area of the military exercises have suffered a lot of uh, a lot of damage in terms of property and other areas, they might want a lot of uh, compensation for that. However, then we need to compensate them uh, no matter how much that costs and then figure out this issue. And the second uh, problem has to do with the UN combined forces in Korea. The UN uh, command post was established in South Korea and it assigned the US the uh, responsibility to defend South Korea. So it looks like the command post is the US command post. However, actually it, it, uh, it has received the order from the UN to defend South Korea. And the major role of the com command post is to defend South Korea and keep peace on the Korean Peninsula in times of war. Uh, to be specific, if the war was to break out on the Korean Peninsula, uh, we don't need to go through a complicated process because the UN command post here can provide the military aid. And under the uh, Korean Peninsula Agreement, the UN command post is overseeing the demilitarized zone and uh, overseeing the implementation of the agreement. However, there are some negative sentiments against this command post. Some say that after the transfer of OPCON, the UN command post might try to control the South Korean forces. And some also say that even though the demilitarized zone is our own property, we cannot enter the property. Actually, there were a lot of overlaps, overlaps in work between the UN uh, command post and the US ROK command post. Maybe that has contributed to such impression. The US ROK command post, if the ROK takes the control of the command, then it might try to uh, uh, separate it from the UN command post, but we call it the reactivization. But some say that such reactivation process is the control of the South Korean forces by the UN command post. Actually, in, within the UN command, about 150 out of 200 staff are Korean people. 
So how can the UN command can bypass the role of Korean people when so many staff members there are the Korean people? Actually, the UN forces command has no reason to interrupt the operation of South Korean forces. Rather, it is doing its best for the safe trust Save a trouble of the South Korean forces within the region. And as you can see from Russia's war in Ukraine, the UN uh, forces actually cannot uh, interfere in the overseas war. However, the UN command helped South Korea during the Korean War. And the third point I want to make has to do with the Korea-Japan military relations. President Moon Jae-in held a meeting uh, with Japan's counterpart and said that Jisomiya pact will come to an end. And this uh, pact came to an end because of the white list uh, sanctions. Uh, the continuation of the pact would not be in our interest because uh, Japan designated South Korea in its white list countries. Actually, for our security, uh, we need the military cooperation with Japan, and Japan's um, security also requires cooperation with South Korea. It doesn't make sense that South Korea and Japan conflict with each other when the cooperation between the two countries is necessary for the security. Why would North Korea threaten to launch a missile into Japan? Is it because of the colonial past? No, that is not the case. It is because since South Korea can use the nine uh, force bases within Japan, that is why North Korea threatens to attack Japan. I sometimes even worry that the Japanese people might realize this reality and might uh, refuse uh, the access to such spaces by the Korean people. That is my worry. Actually, in these circumstances, actually, we are only three minutes away from uh, the North Korea's nuclear attack geo geologically. Under these circumstances, I believe the Chisomiya Pact is necessary for military cooperation between Japan and South Korea. And outside the Chisomiya, there are various threats such as terrorism and threats in the sea. And to deal with the threats, we need to normalize our relations with Japan. Even though there are many past historical issues, we need to set them aside and deal with security issues on their own. And the fourth is the participation of the Korean forces in the military exercises. As you know, the Urchi military exercises have taken place, but recently such military exercises were postponed and our military exercises also were stored. And usually we uh, reviewed the Chungmu military exercises process, but now we don't even do that. So regardless of the U.S. ROK combined military exercises, we need to uh, carry out our own government-led military exercises. And when the U.S. ROK combined exercises are resumed, we also need to focus on our own military exercises as well. And over the past several decades, the high-level officials, even from the conservative body, never participated in the military exercises. I don't know why. Except for President Park Jong-hee, uh, presidents have never paid a visit to those military exercises. We need to negotiate and coordinate with the US over a lot of issues. However, even though the military exercise provides such an opportunity, we have not paid enough attention to them. And lastly, the environmental issue. Recent press release said that the US forces Korea uh, emitted the carcinogen or other uh, emissions 500 times more than the limit. Actually, Adopting the environmental standards of the US to the South Korean context is not legitimate because they are the US standards. However, we need to think about why the US forces are stationed in South Korea. This is because those forces have defended us in 
We also asked the U.S. forces to move to Yongsan and they, Yongsan, and they accepted that offer. So I think it doesn't make sense for us to ask them to leave because of the environmental issues. So I want to make clear that the U.S. forces Korea have nothing to do with the environmental issues. So therefore, the protesters should not hold demonstrations in front of the U.N. forces bases because they have nothing to do with them. And Second, it's not that all of the U.S. forces bases emit such uh, harmful emissions all the time. Actually, a fraction of those bases are contributing to those environmental issues. If you have ever entered the U.S. forces bases, you would realize how clean they maintain the facilities without any carcinogen emissions. And Let's talk about the return of the uh, bases. Returning those bases can take a decade or two, which can also cost us a lot of money. And that money can be seen as the sunken cost. I think, excuse me, opportunity cost. I think rather than paying such costs over a long period of time, it would be better for us to swiftly return the bases first and then uh, utilize those funds for other reasons. The obligation of the forces is to safeguard the lives of the people. However, uh, the support from the people is needed for the operation of the forces as well. To be sure, the efforts of the forces are needed as well, but I think we also need to show support for our forces. Thank you for listening.